the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Things of the Spirit are concerned, and you begin that journey, and here comes the storm. The storm is made of wind. Oh man of God, hear this. This may be a word for you. Oh businessman, hear this. This may be a word for you. The storm is not proof that your spiritual life has gone down. Don't let the devil lie to you. The storm, the quarrel in your home right now is, is not proof that you are not faithful. It's not proof. Many times it is because the devil wants to distract you so that you will go back. I can tell you if they made up their minds to go back, the storm would cease. The same energy it takes to go back is the same energy it takes to continue. Whether you go back or go forward, it will still take energy. We're dealing with Luke 8 now. And then the interesting thing is that the Bible says Jesus was sleeping. You don't want a savior to be sleeping during a storm. You want a savior to be alive. But Jesus was sleeping. And you would, thought, you, you, you would think that um, as, as boys, terrors as the storm was, he, it would wake him up. Jesus was still sleeping. That means, listen, this is very powerful. The Bible says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Why will Jesus be sleeping in a boat that is raging left, right, and center? He did not wake up. He was sleeping. It took them waking him to say, Master, carest not that we perish. Because he knew for sure that he would not perish. Are we together now? They never said, Jesus, wake up. Your life is in danger. They said, we, we, there is something about your mentality that even the storm does not affect you. We know you are fortified. You have your thinking. You have a mindset that would not allow storms to move you. But help us. Have mercy on us. We are still trying to grow. Can I tell you this? There is a lesson here for everyone to learn. Two people were in the same storm. One sleeping, the other one shouting let this mind be in you sometimes you see people rejoice and praise the lord until you hear what they are rejoicing over they are rejoicing over pain they are rejoicing over disappointment the man can be singing and clapping and there are bills to the billions to pay he has received a mentality that god god's god's jealousy defends him and that there will be a way the end will be victory this is how we think in the kingdom. Please understand this. We live in a world that is very passionate about attracting sympathy. And sometimes we, we tend to believe that just because we have justifiable reasons to feel bad, we can throw away everything and blame everybody and get angry. People do foolish things in society and justify it. Why did you steal? Well, there's poverty in the country. Why are you not serious? Well, there is no job. But Jesus had a mentality. This is the second thing I want us to learn. The first is about the reality of storms. That it happens to all men, including Jesus. And then number two, there was a mentality that Jesus had. Even in the midst of the storm, he was asleep. That looks to me like the scripture that says, Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. Now here's the secret. For thou art with me. It didn't say for thou art talking to me. There are times 
that you don't have to wait for the storm to be calm to rejoice. Just verify if Jesus is there. The moment Jesus is there in the boat, begin to find rest. You can fail alone, but you and Jesus cannot fail together. If you are the only one in the boat, even if you are a skilled man at sea, begin to be afraid. But if you check that boat and you verify that Jesus is there, even if he's sleeping or seems to be sleeping, find rest. The first reason why we find rest in this kingdom is not because the storm is over. It is because Jesus is in the boat. Oh, this is, this is a prophetic word to someone right now. I may not know how the solution will come. I may not know what to do. I'm, I'm in the middle of nowhere. I began a journey to start a business and now I'm in debt to the millions and the billions. Uh, it was because of my desire to go to the other side. The other side of my destiny. I can't remain at this level. For the Bible says the path of the just is as a shining light. There are many people who do not have storms. It's not necessarily a proof of spirituality. It's proof that they are so cowardly they don't have the courage to go to the other side. Are we learning now? It takes courage. A storm must, must be sure that you are worth its attention to come to you. Now, learn this lesson. Number one, storms happen to all men including jesus it is not unusual one of the scriptures that baffled me for many years is this statement in revelation and there was war in heaven war in heaven heaven is your throne with the all-seeing eye omniscient omnipresent there was still war in heaven Notice the character of God in both cases. God never stood up from his throne because of the war. He was still seated at rest. There was already a system put in place. Listen, learn this. Rest is proof of faith. Rest is proof of faith. You may need to prophesy to yourself. Say, myself, find rest. Myself, find rest. The Bible says, except the Lord builds a house, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord watches over a city, said the watchman watched but in vain. It is vain to wake up early and to sleep late at night, only to eat the bread of sorrow. But he gives his beloved sleep. Are we together? So there is a mentality that was in Jesus that I'm proposing to us every time you seem to not have control over the issues in your life forget about the issues and verify in that boat is jesus there he can be there as the prophetic word he gave you he can be there as the word of god that you hold on to are we together now yes this home now it's three years five years six years we're trusting god for children and it looks like children are not forthcoming that is a storm it was a desire to raise a generation of prophets and apostles who will frontier the kingdom now a storm has come and all kinds of naysayers will be around you trying to discourage you to say go back remember what i told you the same energy it takes to go back is the same energy it takes to continue jesus had a mentality he was so at rest and they tapped him and said master carest thou not that we perish please give us the scripture verse that will be verse 23 or 24 luke chapter 8 verse 23 or 24 luke chapter 8 master he says carest thou not that we perish and the bible says do you know the bible says verse 24 is the verse 
and they came to him and awoke him saying master master we perish then he arose jesus never told them one word until the storm was over he didn't say gentlemen how are you just become no he turned to the wind not the water jesus addresses storms by starting with the wind the spirit the force from the realm of the spirit that brings that storm and he said peace another synoptic account says be still and there was a great calm and then he now turned to the people and said now that i'm done with the storm let me teach you something where is your faith he turns to the wind like someone is going to turn to the wind this night that it is time for me to move forward and thou storm that is standing before me manipulating things acting as though it's a financial problem acting as though it's a marriage problem acting as though it's a health problem just when they say you are about to be promoted you touch yourself and it looks like there is a growth somewhere and the devil starts telling you cancer so this is how you are going to die that is a storm it is not the swelling there is a spirit there is a way that we deal with storms jesus is giving us a lecture that you deal with storms by rebuking the wind you only rebuke what is alive you don't rebuke what is dead that means the wind had life and it could hear the force that is behind the tragedy the force that is behind that is pausing an impedance to your journey can hear and if you know how to speak as a priest that storm can be calm you don't have to bother about the water let the wind seize its influence and the water will come back to normal so the issue is not just a financial problem the issue is not just a marital problem the issue is not just job the issue is not just your destiny help us forgetting you there is wind that is making the water to be boisterous but imagine the labor they would have gone through trying to look for a container to fetch the water out one by one one imagine you're trying to fetch it out and it's coming into the boat again it would have killed them there that's how many of us try to manage challenges now jesus is teaching us a lesson here that for every storm please pay attention there is wind and there is water dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless Check our home page for more of our messages, subscribe to the channel, comment on it, like it. See you on our next video. Bye! Pray! Pray! Pray for your destiny! the face of development lord grant me the discipline